Do you hear that? It sounds like a plane is gonna crash into my house. Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna be talking about the brand new Riviera palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. I went out and purchased this myself. I was one of those people that at first was like, uh, I don't know, maybe. And then something happened when I was at Ulta. It just like was there and it was just like screaming in my face. And I was like, oh, like this has such good like vacation vibes. Like the whole packaging is just like so exciting to me. I love the navy and the gold. And then you look on the back and you're like, wow, so colorful, it's so different. And I think that we're all in this place where we want different makeup. I want different makeup. I am getting almost borderline to like a little tiny place of boredom. I hate saying that. I really do. But I also have to take a look at like how much of the same makeup I really own. You know, like my comfort zone is this. How many times can I share neutral bronzy browns with you all? I don't know. I love them still. Um, this, by the way, side note, super good palette. Okay, um, we're gonna dive into this very colorful look. I have just leaped off the cliff of my comfort zone. We are bungee jumping into neon. into purple. We're just gonna talk about it all. We're gonna talk about the swatches, the pros and cons of this palette. I'm gonna go over everything and in detail share with you guys how I got this look. You could achieve this with many different palettes out there. And especially if you have the James Charles palette, you could achieve this look very easily. So keep that in mind as well. I'm starting to notice that now after doing this for so many years, that there are similar things I have from palette to palette to palette. So when you see a look like this and you're like, oh my God, I love neon pink. I need to go out and I need to purchase that palette to achieve something like what Tati's wearing. I'm here to say, no, you don't. You probably already have something kind of similar. And if it's, you know, more of a neon orange, and purple, that could look great. So just kind of be thoughtful of how often you would wear something this bold and bright, why you would be purchasing it, what your intentions for the palette are, and all of that. Because when you're purchasing these bigger ticket items, you know, this is $45, it's even more expensive by three bucks than the Renaissance palette, which is also really interesting. They do jump around price to price to price um, on the Sephora site, I noticed that, from palette to palette. So this is $45, you do get so many incredible shades in here. So I am not dogging on this palette at all. I am just personally saying that I already own a lot of what is in here, but somehow just looking at it as a consumer in the store, I didn't think that, like I didn't have that reaction. I didn't go in my mind and go, oh hey, you have this neon palette, you have that neon palette, you have the blood sugar palette, you have James's palette. You know, it's just, it kind of, like left my mind, you know? So I'm just giving you a little healthy reminder. These are colors we have seen before. The setup is quite different, which makes it feel really exciting, which is nice. You do get this top row that is dominated by metallics and they are beautiful. They blend really nicely. You can use them wet or dry. This shade right here, Sales, is just like one of my favorites in the entire palette. This is so nice. And the reason I like this white shade is because if you use something like Bahamas, also so gorgeous, like so stunning, I love this shade. It will stain the crap out of your eyelids. This is not the first time I have worn this palette. So let me share that with you as well. So this will stain your eyelids. It does say on the package that it is a pressed pigment and it does say that you wanna be careful to not use this on the immediate eye area. They have to label it that way per regulation here in the US. Globally, things tend to be different from country to country. Google it, make sure you're comfortable with things. For me, I've never had an issue. I love using pressed pigments, but keep in mind, even when you use a base, sometimes they will stain. <sighs> you gotta pay the price with it. You want this kind of beauty on your eyelids, it's gonna do a little bit of damage. So you can take the white and you can kind of dull it down and you can do that with anything really. And it's gonna make this more of a cotton candy type of a pink. So I ended up taking white right here and kind of grazing it over that neon just to give more of a soft cotton candy ombre type of a look. I didn't want things to be so pow, pow, pow. I wanted them to just have this softness but still have 
that bright color. So I love that you get that shade in there. It is a beautiful, beautiful opaque white shade that is so helpful really in any palette. So love that. And then that top row again, you have all these metallics. Let's just go through them right now. You get Yacht, Seashells, Palermo, Seaside, Inheritance, Mediterranean. Then you go down, it, this whole palette's very rich apparently. You get Estate, Cabana, Coastline, Bahamas, Monte Carlo, Can, and Palm. Palm, Bahamas, and Can are pressed pigments. Okay, so we also have the loose highlighter to chat about. We have the dewy set to chat about. We have lots of things to chat about. Let's get into this eye look. I'm gonna further explain how I feel about things, where I struggled, why I struggled, all of that. So let me wipe the neon off my hand before I stain more of myself. And while I'm doing that, you guys subscribe, ring the bell, make sure you've done that. Thumbs the video up. I would so appreciate it. I'm here Monday, Wednesday and Friday and you can come back and hang out and we'll talk about makeup and life. It'll be a good time. All right. So let's hop right in. The very first thing that I did was loaded up my eyelids with a little painterly paint pot. And I am gonna go ahead right now and take a moment to give a shout out to Cassie MUA, who I met through James Charles, and she's actually the one that got me back in the habit of using a paint pot and not using a powder on top of it. We literally sat over at James's and we were all talking about pressed pigments and trying on different eyeshadows because literally like that's what we do. <laughs> it's just so funny, like behind the scenes, is this genuine, true love. Like, not just like puppy love, but like love of makeup. I love people who have such passion for products the way that I do, I completely relate to it. And I love learning from makeup artists in general. You know, I learned from Scott Barnes just the other day, him doing my makeup again. I have so many more tools and so many ideas and I'm so inspired and I can't wait for you guys to see that video. It'll be up on Monday. But in the same breath, you know, meeting someone like Cassie and sitting down and talking, she's an incredible artist and she has so much knowledge and you know, learn wherever you can is my point. And she was talking about how she doesn't set her eye base. And I have always been that person to set my eye base so that I have this smooth canvas. And to me, that's always helped me with blending. The conclusion that I have come to is the painterly paint pot or anything wet like that with pigment that you would lay down on the eyelid first, don't set it. Just go in with the color and that sounds so terrifying but just try it. And if you hate it, it's just makeup, you can wash it off. But that has worked so well in making almost everything blend a million times better, specifically when you're talking about brighter shades. So thank you so much, Cassie. I'm gonna link her below, go check her out. She's really edgy and really cool and does cool makeup. And I think you guys will love her. So I definitely did that trick today. And that is the only way that I can make the purple shade work. I've tried it on a bare lid. I've tried it just with, you know, like Urban Decay primer on the eyes. Don't do that, it is so bad. Um, this color is really difficult to blend and it's because it's so bright and purples are so hard to formulate. All the purples I have in my collection are kind of like that. The brightness of this shade, if you can get it to blend out, obviously is really, really beautiful and really special. So I took my time. I stayed there for a while. I blended, I blended, I blended. I wanted to show you guys on camera what this brush would do. Blend, 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 blend some more. And then I was like, screw this. I don't like this brush. Then I went in with this gem right here. This brush is so magical. Like this is the best brush ever of all time. This is the Scott Barnes 62. And I went in here and just blended further in the crease, round, 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 up, up, up. Then you can even grab color on the side here, pack, 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 round, round, round. And the thing that I like about this brush is you see the tip right here. It has such a nice taper that you can then take the leftover and go down underneath the eye on the spot and then go back up 
do this, get on the side. It's just a perfect shape. So this is my favorite eyeshadow brush at the moment and it's what really helped blend all of that purple out. If I didn't have this brush, I don't know how well this would have blended. This is a tricky color and of course that's the one that I went right for. I was like, I wanna do a purple, you know, really blown out kind of a thing with the pink. I had a look in mind. So this is as blended as it was going to get. It looks pretty good. It took me a very long time. I had to layer, 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 and literally I had to fix patches. So it is patchy. What I do is I will take a little bit of the color and I'll just kind of tap a little bit where I see like balding or uneven color. And then what I do is I will take a velour puff and I will then kind of fold it in half and almost go like this a little bit on top. So this was kind of a pain to get it to look like this. Not an easy color. Moving on. Then I went into sales. Easiest color out there. Just took a flat brush, looked down in the mirror, pat, 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 pat. I could have just left it at that and had it be this like milky lavender purple thing, put on some lashes and been done. But I really wanted to show off that bright pink because Bahamas is such a beautiful color. It looks so gorgeous. Just absolutely stunning. And then on the lower lash line, I did take Mediterranean. I spritzed it with a little bit of their dewy set. I just kind of smudged this along. I think it adds like a nice little glimmer. I took a Linda Halberg's brown pencil that's kind of bronzy and metallic, put that in the waterline to further kind of brighten things up. I didn't really line my eyes, but I did take Palm with an angled liner brush from Scott Barnes. And I just really ever so slightly kind of took the powder right here just to emphasize the outer edge of my eye and give a little bit of dimension and lift. I did take a little bit of the loose highlighter and I just did a dab under the high point of the brow. You can see it's very, very reflective. And that was it for the eyes. I put on Claudia Lashes. <laughs> that is um, Anastasia's daughter's name is Claudia. So accidentally theming it out today, but these lashes are so gorgeous. These are Scott Barnes lashes. They are synthetic mink and the way they are cut they just, they're easy as can be. I just popped them on, didn't even trim them, and they look great. There was someone on the Anastasia site. It was like the prettiest look, and I almost did like an inspired buy, but I was like, I don't know if I can do that. Like, I don't know if I really can take it there with my eye shape, and it just looked super intense, but I appreciated it. Now, I know there's gotta be a little judging with Facetune. There's no shame in that. Like, come on, we all know. Um, so don't expect for you to use this and actually look neon, that's just not gonna happen. Just lower your expectations a little bit. But this looks so pretty. It really, really does. And his page is incredible. So good. So check him out. But all in all, I will say I would recommend this if you're someone that doesn't already own a bunch of these similar colors. I'm gonna go grab the James Charles palette just to show you guys the similarities. Hold, please. Where is my James Charles palette? Phone the police, please, because my James Charles palette is nowhere to be found. I have a brand new one in there, but I just really don't want to crack into it. And now I'm like, did I leave that in Seattle? I think I might have. Um, I do reach for that one a fair amount and it has a lot of brights and that was the whole like vibe with the palette is that you get neutrals, brights, you get everything. So that's a good option if you're zeroing in on that neon pink, the brights, the purple, you want that. You also want a matte brown, a white. Like if that's your thing that you need, you might like that larger palette that has so much and is less money. So that is an option and they do blend very, very well. Another option, and I believe this is around 25, is from Huda Beauty. This is stunning. Like, I don't know why I don't show this off more, but it is literally one of the prettiest bright palettes ever. You get mattes and you also get shimmers. So you're not limited to just this palette. Like we're in a space in a day and age where you can really find 
whatever you like from many different brands. So you can see here, you could achieve a very similar look. If you already have, say, a naked palette or something like that, and you want to just add a little bit of brightness, sometimes it's better to purchase a smaller add-on palette like this than go and get the full thing. But if you love the Anastasia formula and you wanted to know, is this good? Yeah, it's good, I like it. So uh, kind of confusing messaging, sorry guys but that's just what it is. This is really nice, gotta say. Pretty. Oh, now I wanna do a similar look, but like with this and this. I'm kind of into it. I kind of feel like I screwed up with like the, the lip being as loud as it is. Maybe we need to take off the lip. I'm just in a weird mood today. So I'm a little all over the place and I apologize for that. I just did not like the lip and I was like staring at the monitor and I'm like, you know what? I think this would feel a whole lot more wearable with more of a nudie lip and lo and behold, it is. I actually really like this combo now so much more. What do you guys think? Sometimes pulling back and not being overly bright everywhere, lips and eyes, is truly the better way to go, but play around with it. It is just makeup. I always say that. Remind yourself, it does wash off. Like, look what I just did. I altered it and found something that I liked better. So I am wearing Brulee from Dose of Colors. I am also wearing Glow Skin Beauty and Cupcake now. All right, so you guys get it. There are other options out there. Here's a quick look at the blood sugar. Really similar pink in here. So for me, I probably should not have purchased this palette, but I also knew that I wanted to try it out, create a few looks, you know, do this on camera for you guys because there was just a lot of buzz going around about it. There is also buzz going around this guy right here, which is the Anastasia Dewy Set. Now, I like this, but I don't love it as much as MAC Fix Plus. And the reason why is because it feels a little bit sticky on the dry down. The bottle itself is stunning. It's gorgeous packaging. There is no glitter in here. It is just a clear liquid. So this is just the exterior packaging. So don't think that you're getting a spray that is just gonna put glitter all over your face. That's not gonna happen. Um, but this is a really nice mist. It smells very beachy. Yeah, glycerin, glycerin. This is a glycerin spray, very similar to MAC Fix Plus. So if you already have a Fix Plus or a setting spray you love, do you absolutely die hard need this? No, you don't. Is the packaging so gorgeous? 100%. Man, this is actually turning out to be a review that I didn't think it would be. I thought I would be hyping up the products a little more than I am because it's not like I don't like them. It's just that I think we already all have a lot of this, you know? So this is the Anastasia Loose Highlighter. This is the shade So Hollywood, which is the shade that James Charles used over and over and over to the point that I was getting frustrated that I couldn't purchase it on Sephora anymore. I was like, where can you find this? Like, I want that too. It looks beautiful. I clearly missed it on that one and I always wanted to try this shade. So I was really excited that they came out with the loose version. This is a beautiful highlighter. So this one I really do love. Now they have three different shades. They have one that is more bronzy that will be better for deeper skin tones. They have one that is even more icy. And then this is kind of the middle of the road guy right here. So the package is just, oh, they all have this glittery top. They are so gorgeous. It's smooth. It's just very, very appealing. This I find satisfying. Fine, I love it. You open her up and you just have kind of loose, loose highlight here. So this highlight has a lot of interesting metallic flex to it, which I really like. And I thought it was very similar to other things that I owned until I did side-by-side -side swatches. This has a different level of richness to it than a lot of the other loose highlighters that I have. So I do think this one is very special. I will continue to use this. It will be front center and you can use this one wet or dry. So this is just like the home run of the bunch. The palette, I think I probably will use again and I do enjoy it, but also it's reminding me that I have so many other fun neons to play with and I'm kind of into it. I kind of feel like maybe 
I could get more comfortable with color once again. I used to be that person that would wear really bold, colorful eyeshadow all of the time, and then something snapped where I was like, no, neutrals, bronzes, like that's my thing. And right now seeing the trend move into like a bright neon in the inner corner and just bolder colors on the lid, but really like softly blown out, I like it, I do. Let me know you guys, do you like this look on me? Let me know in the comments, I'm curious to hear your feedback. So here's the run down guys, approved, kind of approved, Oh, A plus all the way. So that is that. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Make sure you are subscribed. Ring the bell while you are at it for good luck. And cause it's also the right and nice thing to do. And then additionally, you will be notified of when I'm uploading my video with Scott. You guys stay tuned for that. He is JLo's makeup artist and he spills all the secrets. Like it is so incredible how much I learned from him. Every time I'm with him, I learn things, but this time he was here, we filmed it. We filmed him doing my makeup and that is coming soon. So stay tuned and I hope you're having a good one, whatever you are doing. I love you guys. Thanks for being with me today and I will see you all in my next video. Mwah.